Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edward III and we get to hear from the Countess of Salisbury today in Act 2, Scene 1. Now the Countess of Salisbury was sort of taken hostage by the Scottish army, but they only lasted until they saw the British army coming to, inv coming to invade, at which point they left. And she greeted the British army and the English army and was actually kind of excited to see King Edward because they did some pretty serious flirting and if we're going by Lodovic's account of things there was some perhaps inappropriate blushing that happened during their conversation that involved uh, a pretty regular rhyme scheme so I think it's safe to say that she's got a little bit of a thing for the king at this point but we've been spending most of Act 2 scene 1 with the king and Lodovic as the king is trying to write something a letter a poem a something to the countess and he enlisted Lodovic to help him but was very not happy with what Lodovic was able to come up with and was just saying to Lodovic you know give me the pen give me the ink give me the paper and I'll write it myself but then the countess came in and uh, King Edward was sort of upset with Lodovic that he hadn't set up like sentries to let him know if the countess was approaching or about to come in because he wanted to be prepared for that so he's like Lodovic go set people up so that we can just have a moment to speak to ourselves so Lodovic leaves and the countess comes in and she's like you know why why my lord do you look so sad and he's like well I'm sad because I've been done wrong the entire time that I've been here and she's like how have you been done wrong and he's like well you know my heart is pulling me in one direction and and all this sort of stuff and he starts playing that manipulative game both as a man in power and as a man who wants to sleep with the woman that he's talking to where he's like you know you need to do whatever it is that you can do to make me happy you're the only one that could make me happy and she's like you know I'll, I'll do whatever I can because you are my king you are my lord I will do whatever I can to make you happy what would make you happy and he finally gets around to saying that he he like admits to her that he is attracted to her and wants her to love him back and he's like this is this is the only thing that will make me happy is to receive your love and she says but that your lips were sacred my lord you would profane the holy name of love that love you offer me you cannot give for Caesar owes that tribute to his queen that love you beg of me I cannot give for Sarah owes that duty to her lord he that doth clip or counterfeit your stamp shall die my lord and will your sacred self commit high treason against the king of heaven to stamp his image in forbidden metal forgetting your allegiance and your oath in violating marriage sacred law you break a greater honor than yourself to be a king is of a younger house than to be married your progenitor, sole reigning Adam on the universe, by God was honored for a married man, but not by him anointed for a king. It is a penalty to break your statutes, though not enacted with your highness hand. How much more to infringe the holy act made by the mouth of God, sealed with his hand. I know my sovereign, in my husband's love, who now doth loyal service in his wars, doth but to try the wife of Salisbury, whether she will hear a wanton's tale or no, lest being therein guilty by my stay. From that, not from my liege, I turn away. And then she leaves. So what's happening here is she's trying to be the grown-up. She's trying to be the logical and responsible one. She's saying, you know, I, I wish that I could love you, but you're married and I'm married. And the love that you're trying to give me now is the love that you should be giving to your wife the same way that you're asking me to give you the love that I am supposed to give my husband. And she's like, being married is an even more sacred right than being king because this was marriage is blessed by God so by asking me to do this and by offering up that love that you've promised in front of God to someone else you're breaking these sacred sacred oaths that you've sworn to God and and I can't do that so she turns away and she she does let him know at the very end that she's turning away from from that sacrilege, from that breaking of that oath, 
not turning away from the king, which leaves a little bit of a door open to say that she, she still loves her king in whatever, whatever that looks like. She's like, I'm not turning away from you. I'm turning away from breaking this oath, from allowing my husband to be you know, wary of me or jealous of me or think ill of me. She's like, I'm turning away from all of that. I'm not turning away from you. And on that note, she walks away, which leaves the king on stage by himself to share yet another monologue with us, which will be tomorrow's monologue. And I will see you then for that. Mwah.